So I've been putting a lot of effort in the past couple of weeks into making more short film style videos for you guys. I love the deep dives and the theology videos we're doing and we'll always kind of do that. But the creative side of me is wanting to flex my muscles a little bit more. So the one thing I didn't plan on is those kind of videos taking way more effort and way more time to complete. But I think when you guys see the finished products, you're really going to enjoy. If you haven't seen the only other short film I've done, go back to the channel. It's called Can't Sleep, a short film. That's the first one I did, and that was over a year ago. So I think we'll be able to put things together on a much higher level and hopefully tell some really cool stories as well. All that being said, I'm ready to make another big announcement about our YouTube channel probably in the next two to three days, week tops. It won't be a full video, it'll just be kind of an announcement video and I'll let you guys know as soon as that comes out. But today, as I was kind of sifting through all the footage and we're just looking at different things, I started thinking about some stuff that I've heard Christians say that I've seen other pastors saying from a pulpit, from online, and it got me thinking about all the little things that I've heard churches, pastors, Christians say that sound good on the surface level, but when you actually start to dig into them, they have some pretty destructive theology behind them. So today won't be a crazy deep dive or anything like that, and maybe this will actually be a shorter video, but I wanna talk about today one short Old Testament verse out of Proverbs that I think is taken way out of context, but is also widely accepted in Christian circles. So let's hop to it, let's make some coffee really fast, and let's talk about it. So I think we've all been there before. You either heard your pastor say it, or maybe your parents said it, or maybe it was just another Christian friend. They say a certain line from scripture, one-liner, not a lot of context, and it sounds good at face value. Our natural inclination is just to accept it. It's from a trustworthy source, and they're quoting the Bible. How could it go wrong? But today I want to talk about one verse I hear used a lot, especially in this kind of modern self-care culture we're seeing pop up. Now, don't get me wrong, I think you should take care of yourself, but I also think we have to be very careful in justifying certain outlooks and attitudes in using scripture to do so. The verse I'm talking about today, I'm almost sure you've heard before, it's Proverbs 4, 23. I'll read it from the New King James because I'm pretty sure that's the one most people have heard before. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Now, you've probably heard that verse before, but I wonder how many times when a pastor is preaching on this or someone says this verse to you, how many times do they actually finish out the context of what this scripture is saying? Let's look at the rest really quick. Verse 24, keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. So for a lot of people, when they use the verse, guard your heart because everything you do flows from it, a lot of times I've heard that taught where we need to protect ourselves, build a shell, create space from the things that could hurt our heart because life flows from it. And once again, it sounds like a great idea. It sounds like we're being wise Christians, we're protecting ourselves from evil or bad influences. And it's actually our Christian duty to make sure we're protecting our heart so that we're upholding righteousness and following God. All that sounds great, right? Like, you're tracking with me? I can't even count how many times I've heard someone use it, post it on Facebook, pastor says it, big YouTuber says it. In fact, when you're done with this video, I would encourage you just type in YouTube, guard your heart, and look at all the Christian YouTubers who are going to give you that perspective. And while I don't wanna bash other creators here or act holier than thou, I think if we just look at the rest of the scripture, we can see that it's actually not saying what a lot of us think it's saying. You keep using the heart. I don't think it means what you think it means. 
In verse 24, it talks about how we need to keep our mouths from perverse talk. In verse 26, it said, be careful of your feet and the path that they walk on. In verse 27, it says, don't turn left or right. Keep your feet and your path from evil. Just really quick, we didn't have to dive in and use the Greek or the Hebrew or crazy hermeneutics. We just had to look at the rest of the context of the verse. And if you look at it, it's not talking about outside influences affecting us. It's talking about the internal state of who we are and making sure we keep ourselves righteous. So let's go back to the original verse and put it in context now. Above all, guard your heart because the issues of life flow from it. What this scripture is not doing is giving you permission to build walls and keep others out because you're scared of their evil influences or you're afraid that you might get hurt. So many times I've heard people use this scripture as a defense to say, well, I'm guarding my heart from that person because I don't want to get hurt and I don't want the hurt that they could bring me. I don't want that to affect my faith or my journey. And once again, it sounds really great, but it's dead wrong. This verse is painting a picture almost like we are the jail keepers. Our heart, if not properly managed and taken care of and healed, can start to spew yucky, nasty stuff on people. It can look like anger, it can look like depression, it can look like accusation. I mean, just think of all the stuff that we internalize and then think about how easy it is to take that internal nastiness and spew it back on people. I'm sure I'm the only one in all the planet who's actually ever done that, right? You had a bad day, you're grouchy, you're aggravated, the things didn't go the way you thought it should, and boom, the first person you saw, blah. You're just hitting them with everything you got. It's not even really their fault. You're just spewing what's on the inside out. Or maybe it's deeper. Maybe it's trauma from our past. Maybe it's a bad relationship that happened. Maybe it's church hurt. It could be so many things that we internalize for years and years and years, and then we end up becoming this negative, nasty person that we never intended to be, or sometimes stuff just slips out and we don't even mean to be that person. What this scripture is trying to tell us is guard your heart because all the issues of life flow out of it. This scripture is not giving you permission to keep people at arm's distance. Jesus is always calling us to bring people in closer, be vulnerable, love people, lay our lives down for them. But if we use this scripture, guard your heart to keep people at arm's distance because of our own personal safety, well-being, mental health, whatever word you want to put on it, we're actually doing the opposite of what Jesus commanded us to do, which is to go out, love people, and bring them to the table of Jesus. So guard your heart means that you are now the jail keeper. You have the keys and the moment your heart wants to start spewing that nasty stuff on people, it is now your job to make sure that nasty stuff gets dealt with because you don't want people who are looking for Jesus getting abused or attacked because of the yucky stuff you have on the inside. And just as a quick side note, I think as we go through the process of getting to know who Jesus is more and more, we actually begin to get healed from that. Now, everybody's on their own journey. Some people, it will happen faster, and other people's, it might take a while. And while this might get me in a little bit of trouble, I think it is bad religion and bad teaching like guard your heart, protect yourself from these people that actually might be slowing your process down. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the hurt and the trauma. You're right. I don't know what you've been through, and you don't know what I've been through, but Jesus knows what we've been through. And we know what he went through, which is arguably a thousand times worse than anything we'll ever go through. And that's not to diminish your pain and your hurt and your trauma that could have happened to you in the past. What I am saying is that Jesus is bigger than all of that stuff. And if we're open to healing, and we're opening to being vulnerable with the people we love, not attempting to keep them at arm's distance because we're so afraid of getting hurt, I think that's when our eyes will really start to open. Now, I didn't want this to be a long video, so I'll leave you with this kind of final thought, and it may need further qualifying in another video. In short, I do not believe we as Christians, 
those of us who claim to have Jesus living inside of us, I do not believe we are created to be emotionally fragile creatures, right? It's not I who live, but Christ in me. That's the goal. And I know a lot of us are still striving to get to that place where it's more of Jesus living in our lives than it is us. But at the same time, if we watch Jesus deal with his disciples when they betray him, we watch Jesus carrying his cross to the place where they're going to kill him. People are spitting at him, yelling at him, cursing him, mocking him, and he never breaks. His emotional state never becomes one where he breaks down. In fact, till the end, he's constantly trying to show the love of God to people. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Can you imagine a Jesus who walked around thinking for three years it was his ministry to keep people at arm's length because he didn't want to get hurt by them? I love what Dan Moeller says, if it sounds ridiculous coming out of the mouth of Jesus, it should sound equally ridiculous coming out of our mouths. Scripture is not giving you permission to push people away because you're afraid they are going to emotionally damage you. Scripture is actually calling us to stand up, let the Christ in us be stronger than all that hurt, pain, and torment that we've gone through and all the yucky stuff that people might want to spew on us and become the light of the world. It's going to be very hard to become the light of the world if we're constantly keeping people at arm's distance. Just a quick recap, the next time you hear someone say, hey brother, guard your heart from that person, guard your heart from that situation, I think a proper response would be, hey, I understand what you're trying to say, but the Jesus in me is so much bigger than just being hurt by every single emotional blow people try to throw at me. I know I'm saying some lofty things, I know it sounds big and maybe too bold or ridiculous, but I promise you, the heart of Jesus is not in pushing people away, but bringing them in. But we have to be strong in him so that our emotional state is not so fragile. I'll end with this one thought that I absolutely understand needs more qualifying and we will totally make a video on this maybe soon. But I totally believe as a Christian, you were not only able, but you were called to live an unoffended life. Not because you are so great, but because the Jesus that lives inside of you is awesome. And if there's one thing he showed us time and time and time again in all of his ministry is that no one could get under his skin. So once again, if no one could get under his skin, we can't give ourselves permission to let people get under ours. We live unoffended. And if we do have yucky stuff that we're still trying to work out, this scripture, Proverbs 4.23, is saying, guard your heart from other people and don't spew your nastiness on them. It is not a permission slip to keep people at arm's distance. I hope this was beneficial for you. I just wanted to kind of put something out there really quick while we're working on some other big projects. You guys are awesome. Let me know what else you want to hear about. Let me know if you agree with what I'm saying. There's a ton of other scripture in the Bible to back up what I'm saying. I didn't have time to throw everything at you. But if you have questions, comments, concerns, uh, put them in the comment. As always, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. If you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel, check us out on Patreon. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Go have a good day. Go love somebody. Don't keep people at arm's distance. And remember the Jesus inside of you and your ability to be vulnerable for other people will always leave bad religion defenseless. You guys are awesome. Until next time, peace.